I was an extremely satisfied person. I was having a great, a great life. Um, I happily married. A grown-up daughter living at home. I had a great job. I just loved. I was a senior lecturer in a technical college in Glasgow. I enjoyed the life with the students, and that came to an abrupt halt when in October, uh, two thousand and eight. Uh, I took this kind of cough um, that transformed my entire life. I did have a cough myself, a, an irritating, tickly cough I just couldn't get rid of. And I also noticed some mornings when I got up and I, I blew my nose and my hanky, I would find traces of blood. I was completely unaware they had any associations with the possibility of lung cancer. In fact, it was only due to my daughter's persistence about my cough, she made me go to the doctor to have it investigated. It was initially investigated as being uh, a, a problem with my sinus and it would be treated with a course of two weeks antibiotics, which didn't clear up. And uh, I was referred again by my daughter back to the doctors. My chest was sounded clear, there was no problems with it, I didn't have any problems breathing, I didn't have any pains in my chest, just this niggly cough and the traces of blood in a hanky. And it turned out, following an x-ray, that I did in fact have lung cancer. The doctor had decided that, uh, in view of the, the, the test that had been carried out, that what best what we'd call a treatment plan would be to give me four cycles of chemotherapy. Following the chemotherapy in the hope that this would shrink the tumour that I had to a manageable size, the surgeon would be happy to operate on me. And I'm happy to say, having had only two cycles of the, the, the chemotherapy, um, the doctors had never seen such shrinkage in the tumour before, and I was a prime candidate for surgery, which was, which I believed, my best option. And I was happy to receive this surgery in January 2009, and was told later that it was extremely successful. The day when I was taken into the doctor's surgery and told that you've got lung cancer, yeah, that was the day I stopped smoking. It was the 14th of October 2008. I can remember it exactly. Um, I remember going home to the house and finding drawers and cupboards with cigars in them that I smoked and I got a pair of scissors and I joyfully cut them all in half and I threw them all in the bin. It was really just to say, that's me, never again, and I've never looked back, I have never smoked since. Please, if you do smoke, please consider stopping. The day you stop, the day your lungs start to heal. If you do show any signs of problems with your chest, lungs, then for example, a cough that doesn't go away, you're getting breathlessness, you're feeling fatigued, would you get to your doctor and, and have a thorough examination just to remember that an early diagnosis of lung cancer can be a lifesaver. I find if I keep myself active, my brain alert and involved in what I'm doing, I can put it very easily to the back of my mind. So as I work as a teacher, I'm very involved with my job from my students and development of new notes and that type of thing. So I don't give cancer any room. I, I crowd it out my brain so that I don't have to face this uh, feeling of morbidity and having the thoughts of maybe the cancer coming back. So I live a very happy life now, well adjusted now. I'm back to 100% before my di diagnosis and I'm, I'm happy with life.